Good morning, world. This is Dr. Rico Short, the Root Canal, special to the stars, the Grace Life teacher, the inspirational motivator for you on this magnificent Monday. Man, I am so excited about this Monday today, man, because this is a gift, man. I was able to wake up this morning, was able to breathe the oxygen that I didn't pay for. And just to be able to be alive, man, and just thank God that I have another opportunity at life. I have another opportunity to be, you know, an encouragement to my family and also be an encouragement to you. So today I want to talk to you guys about apathy, man. Apathy, man. So many people right now, because they didn't get things their way, They have sunk into the spirit of apathy. See, apathy will rob you of your joy. Apathy will remove you from your assignment, your God-given assignment. Yes, I understand that everybody is not going to have everything their way. Life does not work like Burger King, like ordering a hamburger and you can have it your way. Life doesn't work like that. Life is full of wins. And also life is full of losses. And those losses as a believer, those are learning moments. Those are moments of inflection and thinking about, okay, well, how can I do this again? They're not moments where you just sit there. So you don't just want to sit in your apathy. You don't want to sit on the sidelines when things don't go your way. You want to still find a way to get into the game, get into what God is doing because you're included. And yes, I'm talking about everything that we are experiencing. I'm talking about race. I'm talking about politics. I'm talking about religion. See, God does not want us to sit on the sidelines, folks. He wants us to get involved. And you know how we start getting involved? We start getting involved with spending time with God. And focusing on the love that he has for us so that we can reflect that love to other people. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy. No, it takes practice. It's just like if somebody were to learn how to play a sport. Well, when they are young, you know, I remember playing basketball. Man, that basketball was goal was so far away. And I had to do the grandma shot, you know, put the ball between your legs and hoist it up. That's because I didn't have enough strength to get it into the hoop. And then as I grew and as I matured, I was able to shoot the ball pretty easily in the hoop without putting it through my legs. Almost like Steph Curry (laughs) back in my day. But I just didn't sit there. And, And in life, man, when things don't go our way, man, we cannot just sit there. It reminds me of the disciples in the boat and the boat was sinking. But there was only one, Peter, who decided to step out the boat. And I often wonder what was in those disciples' mind? Why didn't they get out the boat? And it's possibly because they were used to it. They were fishermen and they were used to sinking boats. And they said, oh, well, if the boats sink, I'm just going to have to figure out how to swim. And that's how some people are right now because things don't go their way because they didn't get what they want when they thought they should get it. They just sink into apathy and feel like nothing they do counts. And it's a lot of people out there felt like their vote didn't count, that their place in life doesn't count because the election did not turn out the way they desired. But guess what, man? Just wait four more years. You wait four more years and you do what God is telling you to do as a believer. And then you vote again. But you don't just sit on the sideline. You just don't stay in the boat. Oftentimes, I believe God is telling us to get out of the boat, even when it's uncomfortable, even when the person that we voted for didn't win, because that's how you stretch. That's how you learn. And that's how you grow. That's how you become everything that God has called you to be. And I just want to say this just with love, man. We just need to find common ground, man, where we can accept the differences of other people. And I'm not saying that it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong, but we have to learn how to accept the differences of other people and learn to love them where they are. Because a lot of people stay in the boat. It's because that's what they've been conditioned to. It's tradition. 
And a lot of times people stay in their boat because that's what they've always done. That's how their grandparents done it. That's how their mom has done it. And therefore, that's how they're going to do it. But guess what? They won't grow. They won't ever get to where God is calling them to be. Ever. Ever. And that's not only just in family. Man, that's in relationship. That's in marriage. That's in your business. That's on your job. That's just in life, man. If you can't accept the differences that other people have when it's regarding to race, politics, or religion and love them where they are, man, you're not going to grow. You're not going to get to where God is calling you to be. And I know this is a tough message this morning. I know a lot of people rather stay in the boat because that's where it's comfortable because that's what they're used to. But God is calling you as a believer to get out the boat. Maybe you need to make a phone call to somebody that you know you might have said something insensitive to on social media during this election time and just say, hey, you know what? As a believer and me putting my trust in God, man, I shouldn't have said that to you and I'm sorry and I apologize. That doesn't mean that your viewpoint's supposed to change. You still can believe in what you believe in, but the hostility and the things that you said, you know, may be able to be a, a bridge of reconciliation because that's what we're called to be as believers. We are called to be ambassadors of reconciliation. The Bible says that peace is the one who brings good news, man. Great is the peace of the one that brings good news, man. And as a believer, man, our feet supposed to bring good news. And the good news may not make you feel good all the time because the truth doesn't make all of us feel good all the time. Even when I think about some of my issues and some of the things that I have to deal with in life, you know, the truth is I don't like to look in the mirror. None of us do, but we have to because that's how we're going to stretch, learn and grow. And that's how God deals with us. He deals with us one on one in our deepest issues so that we can have compassion on others. Because guess what? If you can't forgive and love others or your brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus that you can see, how can you love God that you can't see? And repeat that. The Bible says, how can you love? How If you can't love the people that you see, you can't love the God that you don't see. And also Jesus talked about you will know them based on their love for one another. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. Love does not give someone else a hard time. Love doesn't judge. Love picks others up. Love encourages. Love prays. And sometimes love can be tough. It's tough love. But God loves us so much, he gives us another opportunity and another opportunity, another opportunity, another opportunity. Every single day, the Bible says his grace and mercy is new every morning for us. Every morning for us. And morning just don't start when you wake up. Morning starts actually at midnight, 12 a.m. It's morning. So even in your deepest, darkest challenges that we all face, his grace and love is new for us. So if his grace and love is new for us, beloved, every morning, why can't our grace and love be new for somebody else? Again, I'm not saying condone what other people believe. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying, okay, well, I'm just going to accept what you believe. No, I'm not saying that. Right is right and wrong is wrong. But what I am saying is that I just think that we all should be able to reach across the aisle sit down and understand where somebody else is coming from understand their viewpoint you may not agree with it but if you understand it man maybe one day that's the bridge for reconciliation maybe one day that will give us some background about how we think because that's what repentance is repentance isn't feeling sorry for ourselves no real bible repentance is changing 
the way we think. It's the Greek word metanoia. So when we change the way we think, that's how we change the way we live. And that's how we change and we make an impact for others around the world. So today, whatever you're dealing with, don't just sit there. If you're dealing with an addiction, don't just sit there, get help. If you're dealing with anxiety, don't just sit there, get help. If you're dealing with marital issues, don't just sit there, get help. If you're dealing with financial challenges, don't just sit there, get help. And you may say, Dr. Shore, I don't even know where to get help. Well, the first place I want to encourage you is getting help from God. He's a very present help. He's always with us. He's Emmanuel. He's God with us. So today, don't just sit there. Get out the boat. Do something different. Reach out to somebody. And trust God to bring you the victory. Because in life, we lose sometimes, but through those losses, that's how we learn. And that's how we stretch. That's how we learn. And that's how we grow. All right. Love you guys. Have a magnificent Monday, man, and a blessed week. This is Dr. Rico Short, The Root Canal, specialist to the stars, the grace life teacher, the inspirational motivator for you on this magnificent Monday. Grace life. Peace.